Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a model showcase video for this 135th scale American M6 heavy tank. Unlike many of the other smaller scale builds that you see on my video listings, in which those builds are built for private commission and belong to a private collector, the model that you see here is built for my own personal collection and is not for sale and or purchase. However, like I often mention in these videos, I often take on commission build projects from models ranging from 135th scale all the way up to 1 6th scale. As for availability and pricing information, that information would be best by contacting me through the email address listed below, which is info at eastcoastarmory.com. The model that you see here is built mostly out of the box, however it does feature several add-on accessories and improvements which were made to the model which we'll be going over in this video. If any of my viewers are watching this video and feeling a sense of deja vu, that is because this is the second incarnation of the M6 tank family that I have built. The first rendition was built a few months ago, and a video of that model is posted on my video listings. That model, though, however, is a different variant than this one here, as that model is representing that of an M6A1, while this model here is just the standard M6. We'll be going over the differences between the two variations in this video. But before I go ahead and do that, let's first take a quick walk around the model. Just like what I mentioned in the M6A1 video, during the mid to late 1930s, the United States Army was playing around with different heavy tank designs. The tank design that eventually came forth and actually entered into production was that of the M6. The type of armament that this vehicle would have featured would have been a main gun, which was a 3-inch, 76mm high-velocity anti-tank gun, a coaxial 37mm gun, dual M2 HB 50 caliber machine guns for the assistant driver, as well as in the hull, two more M1919 A4s for use of the driver. The vehicle also would have featured an M2 HB in aerial pedal mount used for anti-aircraft use. At the time when this vehicle was designed, namely that of the 1930s, this firepower here was deemed to be more than sufficient compared to the other vehicles in the same weight and size range. The vehicle also had sufficient armor, again compared to these other vehicles from the same era. About 40 of these vehicles were actually produced as the vehicle did go into production and was accepted by the US military. After these vehicles were accepted into service, several problems with the transmission were found. The vehicles had a lot of research and development that were done to the transmission, as well as other transmission alternatives were developed and experimented with over time. Problem was, once all of these issues were ironed out, the vehicle itself was in the 1940s time period, to which then this design was becoming heavily antiquated and was not nearly up to par with the other second and third generation tanks of the period. Because of this, the M6 series was never issued to troops in the field and never saw combat or any action outside of the United States where it was stationed for stateside National Guard and Reserve units, as well as it was the hull itself was utilized as a test bed for other new technologies which were being developed during this time. During the period in which these vehicles were going through re research and development, two main variations of this tank were developed, the M6 and the M6A1. The difference being is that the M6 is distinguishable by having a one-piece solid cast upper hull, while the M6A1 utilizes rolled flat plate steel in which is welded together. Shortly after the end of the war, the majority of the M6 and M6A1 heavy tanks that were produced were sent to the scrapyard and were destroyed. Currently, as of the day of this video, there is only one known survivor of this vehicle type. That vehicle being a cast hull M6 heavy tank with a experimental transmission. That vehicle was on external public display for several decades at the Aberdeen Proving Grounds Tank Museum. However, within the last couple years, that vehicle has since been moved down to Fort Benning, Georgia, in which it is waiting further restoration, as well as a fabrication of an indoor display museum. Before we go any further with the video, let's go ahead and take a step back to when the model was first started in order to get an idea on what the original kit contents were and what the kit supplies you with. 
And here's the model just before assembly. For the base starter kit, I'll be starting with the Dragon M6 Heavy Tank. The tank itself is a plastic kit. It's a recent release from Dragon. The kit itself was acquired from Amazon.com. The kit itself is a very recent release, and it supersedes the M6A1 kit, which came out shortly before. That kit, I did a video model showcase on, and that model is found on my channel. In there you'll see the unboxing in which almost all the same components are found in this kit here. Just like with the other model, this kit here is an all plastic model kit. There is no resin or photo etch to be found. As a quick review of the box art, you can see the M6 Heavy Tank at the Aberdeen Proving Grounds with a soldier and his wife posing for a photograph. Model itself is basically a standard dragon box art. The tank itself is nicely rendered by the illustrator. As for the rest of the graphic design, it's your typical dragon black label style format. You have some samples of different markings, as well as some CAD drawings. CAD drawings are also found on the back portion of the box. Opening the package. Reveals the kit contents. As you can see, it is a all plastic kit, like I mentioned before, and it's molded in your standard gray dragon plastic. Quickly, as of note, in the box, I have here a set of CNC brass 135th scale MP48 spring antenna bases from Panzer Art. There's the item number. These were acquired off of eBay, and the pieces are highly recommended. Specifically when I go into more detail about the antennas on the kit, you'll see why this set here is practically required in order to get this tank looking very well. Starting with the kit components, there goes the suspension. This is the exact same parts that were found on the M6A1 with the same notes. Again, M6 HVSS suspension, M6 sprockets, all the pieces are crisply molded, as well as mentioned in the other video. Here we have here the side panels, front and rear portion, along with the bow fenders. Again, these pieces here are directly from the M6A1, even so much as it being listed on the runner. The turret is also the same component from the other kit. Here we have the lower pan, again, also lifted from the A1, with the same features as was mentioned in the other video. Needless to say, all of the casting quality is pretty good and adequate for a contemporary model kit. Getting to this runner here, this runner is where the M6 kit differs from the M6A1. Here we have the upper body. The upper body on this tank here is all cast as opposed to the straight-edged, welded version of the M6A1. As for the quality of the tooling, it's your standard Dragon quality, which needless to say is pretty well. The cast texturing is a little bit light, so if anyone wants to add extra casting to it with Mr. Surfacer, it's probably not a bad idea. Connected to the runner are the bottom rounded portions, which edge along the bottom portions of the hull, which is found on the real M6. As for this runner here, this is for the other components, the front idler mounts, as well as some of the other knickknacks, which are found on the rest of the kit. What's interesting is that this whole runner is from the M6A1, and on the M6A1, this portion here, which is vacant on this kit, is where the upper hull components would have been molded on. Obviously not needed for the cast version, everything, it's a big emitted space. Getting down to the bottom of the box takes us to the tracks. Like with the other kit, they are dragon styrene, they are flexible. They represent that of the three bar cleat in the double pairs, which is designed for the M6. And just like with all of the DS styrene tracks, it's a nice addition, a nice feature found on these newer kits and build and assemble very well and easily. 
The detail is also very nicely done for the medium that they're represented in. Finally, to the very bottom of the box, takes us to the instruction manual. As you see, almost all of the components that you see here will be utilized with the exception of the side antenna well as it's a different variant on the cassette unit. Then at the very bottom of the box, we have here a decal sheet along with a length of cable, which was again very similar on the A1 kit. Starting with the model's running gear, the running gear that you see here is totally stock as per the kit and was built pretty much out of the box. Like I mentioned in the other M6 video, the stock suspension is very nicely detailed and does assemble very well. The only caveat with that suspension is that the suspension itself is very, very frail and is very, very delicate. Much care has to be given to these suspension components during assembly. Also, what, due to the way the m6 tank is designed the suspension is best done after install after the tank is fully painted and weathered this is due to all the sheer amount of nooks and crannies that are located on these components it is going to be nearly impossible to get in there with the base coat and the weathering in addition to that it's also a good idea to install the pieces after it's painted due to the fact that you have to paint all of the rubber tires on the road wheels this again is almost utterly impossible to thoroughly do if everything is assembled pre-paint now just like on the other vehicle the suspension can be made to form fit This was done by simply drilling out the tolerances on the mounts on both the inner hull and on the side plate on the molded in holes in which the pegs mount into. By clearing up some tolerances and not adding a little drop of glue, the pieces will be able to form fit. However, it's a bit of a dubious value as the suspension itself is highly fragile and frail and if put under a lot of stress, the components will, will more than likely break on you. Moving towards the sprocket and the track, just like with the other video, they were utilized out of box as the kit components were actually very nicely done in this regard. Like we mentioned before, the M6 track is unique to the M6 in that it is made out of dual row of three bar cleat Sherman tracks for the VVSS, which have a center mounted link joint, which turns the two separate bands into one complete track. Again, the, tr the components that are supplied with the Dragon kit are more than suffice for this job on this model. Moving towards the front end of the vehicle, takes us to first about headlights. Just like with the other model, the kit supplies you with opaque headlight lenses in which get glued into the headlight canister. Rather than using these opaque pieces, I simply added a drop of clear epoxy to the headlight pan, filling them in with the epoxy. This gives you the nice illusion of a lens compared to just painting the opaque lens with a silver paint. Moving towards the tank siren, this is one location of the kit which was severely lacking in my opinion. As was mentioned in both M6A1 builds and in the unboxing, the kit supplies you with a plastic detailless football type teardrop assembly that is to be used as a siren. Problem is there is absolutely no detailing on the front face of the siren. Rather than using the siren that is supplied with the kit, I went ahead and replaced it with a spare siren that I had left over from a Dragon M4A1 Sherman tank. That siren was simply dropped in place and swapped for the kit one. In my opinion, this portion here greatly helps the accuracy of the model as well as the visual look. Moving on to the fenders, one very distinctive trait on the M6 heavy tank is that the fenders themselves have small little gaps where the, the panel is bent in a 90 degree angle. This is found on both sides. These little gaps here are absent on the kit, however are found on all the M6 heavy tanks, including the real one that I've seen at the Aberdeen Proving Ground. On this model here, I added the missing detailing by cutting a small little notch into the corner portion of the fender with a needle file. This quick little addition also greatly helps the look and accuracy of the model compared to the stock kit arrangement. Moving up from the fenders takes us to again the dual M2 HB heavy machine guns. 
The machine guns themselves are designed to go up and down as per the kit, and the kit supplied machine guns are very nicely done where with having adequate barrel detailing as well as pre-drilled out holes in the end of the muzzles. One mod that I did was the same mod that I made to the M6A1 was that the Dragon kit does allow the piece to go up and down. However, there is no backing to the rotor and the piece will just simply fall in. The rotor missing detailing was added with two small strips of plastruct strip styrene. That simple addition locks thoroughly locks the component in place and makes it pivot with ease. One important portion of the front hull that I missed on my M6A1 build is that of this small little plate over here. As you can see on the front of the M6 heavy tank series there is two small cutouts on the front portion of the hull. On the real M6 heavy tank this is actually where the a M1919 30 caliber machine gun would be mounted. The original M6 had two of these machine guns which were mounted in the front and the idea is that these would be controlled by the driver who would turn the whole tank to utilize the machine guns. This setup sounds a bit archaic today however at the time this was a standard feature and was found on just about all of the heavy tanks of this period. This was also a trait found on the M3 Lee and was also found on very very initial production batches of M4A1 Shermans as well as M4 Shermans. Moving up to the top hull takes us to the driver's hatch. Now the driver's hatch on the stock Dragon Kit does have a small quirk with it and that is of the small little handle that is mounted in this location here. The issue is that if you assemble the model out of the box the handle sticks up too high and you will actually break it when rotating the turret. This is obviously less than ideal and to re to remedy the situation I just simply went ahead and shortened the handle. By shortening the handle it allows the turret to rotate and clear the small little handle as such. Moving towards the rear of the model, takes us to the rear engine deck. Now the rear engine deck on this model here is a identical to the M6A1 kit with the same tools as well as the metal supply cable, which again, like I mentioned in the other video, is a nice touch. Quickly diving back down to the transmission, the transmission cover that you see here is that directly lifted from the M6A1. Now there was another option for the transmission covered for the M6 and that version was found in the example that was in the Aberdeen Proving Grounds which is currently now in Fort Benning. That version had a big casted setup with a lot of fasteners on it. Unfortunately Dragon went ahead and took a shortcut and just used the one from the M6A1 but it would be interesting for an aftermarket supplier to create a drop-in edition of the alternate transmission. The tank that's also fitted with that alternate transmission also utilizes a slightly different engine deck. Again, that would also be a nice addition for possibly an aftermarket supplier to produce in the future. Moving our way to the model's antennas. Just like on the M6A1 build, the kit supplies you with very simplistic and very clunky and inaccurate looking antennas. Rather than using the kit supplied versions, I went ahead and swapped those out for the Panzer Art CNC brass and MP48s. Like I mentioned in the other video, these components here are more than highly recommended and really do make the model stick out from its stock original configuration. They are a nice simple drop in installation which require almost no mods need to be made to the model with the exception of just drilling a small hole in the kit components in order to insert the antenna base itself. As for the antenna base, just like on all of my American tanks as well as on my videos, I always mention that it is important to properly paint these components. I've seen more than enough occasions where people would build very beautiful models, however it would botch up the antenna in by not painting the small little ceramic insulator that is on the piece. By simply painting the insulator as well as painting the the neural end connectors which would have been found on the antenna it's a very simple addition that in greatly in my opinion really makes the model shine moving towards the turret the turret again is the exact same version that is found on the m6a1 which was released before the m6 kit just like with the a1 build i went ahead and added the distinctive molded line which is found on the lower edge 
of the M6 turret is found on all sides. In addition to adding the cast line, I went ahead and also added the small little drain hole for the MP48, as well as the drainage holes for the turret mounted blower. Moving our way to the tanks M2HB, the M2 that the kit comes with is a very nice piece and the gun that you see here is built out of box with no mods needed. The gun does have its muzzle bore pre-drilled out which is a nice touch and saves the builder in having to do it himself. Moving on to paint and markings, the paint that you see here is a shade of olive drab which is a very very early war period and this is the same type of paint that I utilize on my M4A4 radio controlled 1 6 scale Sherman tank as well as my 1 6 scale M3 Lee. As for the weathering it's my usual airbrushing and as for the markings the kit does supply you with a very sparse amount of markings. The markings that the kit does supply you with is basically the US ID number, as well as a small little prompt for the Aberdeen Proving Ground. All of the stars that you see on this model were not supplied with the kit, and these markings that you see here were all grounds from my spare parts bin. As you can see, I also went ahead, in addition to using the stars, I went ahead and also applied the around the turret, the white stripe. White stripes were found on American tanks, turrets of this time. The stripe is all hand painted and was applied via a paintbrush. No stenciling or decals were utilized for the white stripe. Like I mentioned before, this is the second version of the M6 kit that has been released by Dragon. And to compare it with the other version, here is the M6A1 that I finished a few months ago. As you see the two models are the same size and are the same exact dimensions as both pieces feature the same basic components. The big difference between the two kits is that of the upper hulls. As you can see this upper hull here is squared off as this version here replicates that of roll plate and would be welded together on the actual model. On the M6 cast version. All of the edges are blunt and the surfaces are nice and smooth. There are also some differences with the antenna wells that are mounted on the front portion of the vehicle. On the cast version the antenna well is a all integral molded in piece while on the A1 it was a separate component which would have been welded on. The component also sticks above the deck unlike the casted inversion which has it flush with the top deck. As for why the exact same tank family utilizes two styles of construction for the hulls, that reason is literally the same reason for the M4 Sherman. That is because the amount of tooling and resources required to make an all cast hull is a lot more in depth compared to the simple box welded version of the rolled steel hull. This version here was more economical and did take a lot less time to produce than the casted version. While I have the M6A1 out, it's important to note that since the last video I went ahead and, and upgraded the model compared to the way it was found in that video. First modification that was made was that of the siren. Like I, like I mentioned before, the kit siren was inadequate and was utilized on this build when I first built it. Since that, since that video was made, I went ahead and made a mold of the spare dragon siren that you see on the other vehicle made a quick rest and casting and that version was utilized on this build here. I simply swapped out the kit one for the rest of the one. In addition to that, I went ahead and added the machine gun powder fouling to the front 1919 and I corrected a mistake that I had in the other video. In the other video, I incorrectly labeled this, identified this component here as a coaxial machine gun. That is inaccurate. This component here is the actual gunner scope for the two guns. The M6 
series did not have a coaxial machine gun mounted in the turret. Rather, in its place, they had the smaller 37 millimeter gun mounted alongside the main 76. And to further compare size, we have here two M6s. And in the center here is an M4A1 Sherman tank. And here you get to see the sheer size differences between the M6 and the Sherman. Keep in mind, the Sherman was designed to be a medium tank, while the M6 series was designed to be a heavy tank. As for difficulty and skill level, the Dragon M6 kit, just like with the M6A1, is pretty, it's a simple model to assemble with the turret and the hull. The hardest part that really sets this model aside is that of the suspension. Due to the complexity and frailness of the suspension, I really can't recommend this model for a beginner. This model here is definitely more or less geared for someone of an intermediate to an advanced range. The subject matter of this kit is very unique if anyone is a fan of World War II American armor, as well as just prototype and limited production vehicles in general, this kit here is definitely one that is recommended as it does fill a nice little hole that is would be in your collection. It's also recommended for people who are big fans of the Sherman as the M6 is basically an older, bigger cousin compared to the Sherman. Overall, both the Dragon M6A1 and M6 are great additions to add to anyone's collection and are definitely highly recommended. And that concludes this model showcase video for this 135th scale American M6 heavy tank. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. And don't forget to check out eastcoastarmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thank you.